Massachusetts Senate President Karen Spilk is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. She played a key role in a history-making movement, giving the oath of office to Governor Maura Healey, and now the work of governing begins. So what should we expect in the months ahead? The Senate President is here. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with New South Wales political reporter, Sharman Sakati. It's great to have you with us. The Senate President, Karen Spilk, is with us this morning. Happy New Year. Happy, healthy New Year to both of you, too. Great to see you. Of course, you know she's a Democrat from, do you say Ashland or Ashland? Ashland. That I say Ashland too, being a Newton kid. I've always said Ashland. Representing the 2nd Middlesex and Norfolk District, she has served as Senate President since 2018, a lawyer, an advocate on mental health issues. She holds degrees from Cornell and Northeastern. It's great to have her with us this morning. Um, Thanks for your time. Pleased to be here. All right, well, let's start with that historic moment last week when you welcomed now Governor Maura Healey uh, to the House chamber. You also exchanged a few words with her uh, before her swearing in. Can you share a little bit about what you said? Just basically, and I, I think everybody uh, would, would agree with this, it was a very exciting, historic day. Very pleased to be there to share that day. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, I'm so thrilled to be the first woman Senate president to be swearing in our first woman uh, elected as governor and having a woman duo as governor and lieutenant governor. How phenomenal is that? Well, you've been on Beacon Hill a long time. What is this moment like? Very momentous. I mean, I don't lose words very often, but this is something that, that I think it's long overdue. I think um, when you, you realize all of us, and I talk about in the Senate and in the legislature, we all bring our backgrounds, our professional, our personal, our education, our whole wealth of knowledge and experience to the role. It is different. Each, as a woman, has a different uh, wealth of experience. And just like having more uh, women, more people of color, more diverse and being more inclusive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that will really help the Commonwealth. It's only one of, of two states in the union that have a governor, lieutenant governor, all women front, front right. corner right. office, if you will. Arkansas is the other one. So in Governor Healy's inaugural address and in, in your address to, to the Senate after being reelected president, you both spoke about free community college. So uh, uh, why is the step necessary? I'll, I got two, two questions, but the yep. first one is why is it necessary? Uh, because we can't afford to not do it. We are having more and more students. Our community college enrollment, believe it or not, is right now declining because so many people, young people, uh, have to work mm -hmm. to put food on the table, pay mm -hmm. for child care, pay for so many other things that they are opting to not enter community college. That is a doorway, a pathway to not only uh, uh, other higher education, but opportunity for them and their future. It's also for our businesses, our all of our economic sectors, our future workforce, and our the vitality of our well, commonwealth. In, in, in many ways, a lot of the a lot of the skills that you learn in community college are necessary in, in society today. So it's very helpful to move society forward. But the question might be, how do you pay for it? Well, uh, I believe you know we've looked into and, and the the first. Uh, Look at uh, looking at it um, to pay for tuition and fees would be approximately fifty million dollars, and I believe that we have the funding for that. Especially the people of the Commonwealth have told us they want more investment in public education, public ed, and transportation. With the passage of the Fair Share Amendment, so that will bring more funding in. And I can say, as long as I'm Senate President, every Fair Share dollar will go to new mm -hmm. investments to education and transportation. So it's the millionaire's tax money that you think could help fund this? Th that will be there, yeah, certainly to help from that or other things. And, and I will work it through with, with the governor and, and the speaker and, and uh, our partners. Uh, but we need everybody on board, both in the public and private sector, to, to work can, on this. Can you get it? Can you get everybody on board to get to the target, to reach the goal that you'd like to reach? I believe so, yes. I believe so. All right. You played a major role in getting landmark mental health legislation passed last year, but we do hear from our viewers constantly about the lack of access to professionals and care. Is the promise of the legislation getting lost in the practice here? I hope not. What we what the Senate did when we had the ARPA funding bill, we took 400 million for programs and services and allocated that specifically to best practices across the state. And at the very same time, 130 million towards student loan repayment. 
So I hope that there, whoever is listening, at, you know, in the audience, if they want to go into practices in the mental heal, he, uh, health field from psychiatrists, psychologists, social worker, all the way down to peer recovery coaches, the state through this, the funding that the Senate initiated will pay for their education because we need more people. We have the beds in, in the, the serv in the, in the, across the state, but we don't have the staff, so we need to get more staff and more people to, to, do the, to be there, actually, so that we can move people out of the EDs and mm -hmm. into the beds. It's going to take some time. Gonna take some You're time, right, but like. we're working on it. We're trying to increase rates for, for some of these things, whether it be for uh, Medicaid or other, to do all hands on deck to get more people because this is a crisis. It was brewing before COVID, but it's gotten worse clearly since COVID. Massachusetts is uh, one of the two states in the union that does not have laws in the books to protect victims of revenge porn. Legislation nearly made it through before yeah. the change in administrations. So it does, is that a priority? Will you make that a priority this session? Yes, I was actually one of the first supporters of, of a bill in uh, a, you know, prohibiting revenge porn. Um, um, it, you know, the House passed it. It was in the Senate. We've been meeting with a lot of advocates. We heard a lot of concerns. Uh, it's really important that we get this right because there were issues concerning some civil rights and then there's a lot of potential issues with our, our youth who might get caught up with this revenge porn. We want to make sure that we provide the appropriate services or programs and, and that they're available if we pass this law uh, to help them and not criminalize it for them. And what about the dangerousness bill? Governor Baker, before he left office, said he took heart. He took some comfort in knowing that that passed in the Senate as well. You know, again, the, that was very broad. We had a lot of concerns about that. Uh, so we, we will continue to meet with advocates, meet with stakeholders, and take a look at that as well. All right. You place high value, certainly, on education. Teachers, they play a critical role in that. We all know certainly. that. Massachusetts Teachers Unions, they want the right to strike. And we've seen Haverhill, Malden, and Brookline. They've all broken state law and have moved ahead with strikes, and then contracts have followed. So it appears to have worked. So my question is, should the law banning teacher strikes be changed? You know, my son is a teacher. He's a public school teacher. Uh, I was a labor lawyer before coming to the State House. So certainly uh, I support these areas. Uh, my first and foremost concern, though, is to ensure that our children stay in school. You know, we learned when COVID you know, went and so many schools were shut down, our, our kids were the ones that suffered the most. So we need to take a look and make sure whatever we do, we keep our kids in the schools so that they continue to learn and have that social and emotional growth as well. It sounds like you're not on the side of... Well, of you know, this is the first I'm hearing about it here, but my, my concern is keeping schools open. The next topic I want to talk about is is salary, is money. Uh, you are among the top lawmakers who will get a big bump in pay. You, you and the speaker are set to see a $25,000 increase in your salary. It will put you both over $200,000. And, and, and I will ask this honestly and frankly, is, is this tone deaf at a time when many are concerned about how they're going to heat their homes, how they're going to pay for electricity within the Commonwealth, and to, to hear that the, your salary and the speaker's salary will go above $200,000 with a $25,000 raise? Uh, I think all of the constitutional officers will, will be above that as well. Um, you know, I, I, whether that's fair or not, my constituents will vote or not and deci decide that for me. That law was passed um, both with it's, you know, the first piece that, that the, the governor gives is, uh, gives the increase was done what, long before I became a legislat legislator. Um, I do believe that we want legislators though that are not all wealthy that we need people who can don't that don't just you know that can't just take time off that mm -hmm. have have lived experiences that have worked that um it, it the option is to have just really wealthy people doing the job and uh, i don't think that's what would be so great for a de democracy or massachusetts is a lot of money annually most of the people watching right now don't make two hundred thousand dollars a year and to get a $25,000 raise in this environment. It, can you say no to it? Could you say, no, I don't want you it, don't forget have to about it? You accept it, right? Right, I don't have to but accept it. But you are it. accepting it. I, I will be accepting it. I, you know, I will be accepting it.